We're more on the uh, resistance to change. Um, even that war, that uh, barrier was even worse than the COVID-19, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, because actually in the last few months, we we didn't slow down the project uh, at all. So actually the evaluation of the uh, new IT um, sourcing system was done during those uh, months uh, in the second quarter, also the POC. So I, 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 we had a very intensive activity in the last few months and we didn't slow down the, the transformation project at all because of COVID-19. But I think the barrier was more, more on the mindset and on the resistance to change, basically. I, I hear you and feel the problems that you were facing and resiliency is very important there. Uh, Mike, how about yourself? What were the challenges you faced and how did you resolve them? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge on our end was really keeping the focus as there were so many topics ongoing. Uh, we had to deploy a new ERP system, we had to hire people, we had to master the transitions so to get new countries into our procurement services. And here it was uh, very helpful to have always a plan on hand to make sure that uh, you always know the big picture which I you heading towards at the end and um, in particular during the uh, COVID times it was very helpful to have a plan on hand and to also share that with the involved parties because as uh, Yolanda just mentioned it's uh, very challenging to keep the communication and the alignment ongoing being connected only remotely and here uh, I try to use as much as possible video conferencing in order to not have only the audio connectivity, but also to really see the other person and see the reaction of the other person, which uh, can be very helpful in order to overcome uh, resistance or first of all, to see that resistance are there in the face of a person, which is very hard to see when you're on the telephone only. Uh, yes, video has put us all uh, closer together where we were separated by big distances. Uh, and, and Mike, uh, so with you, how are you approaching automation? Automation for me is, is so fundamental and important that it, it shouldn't be done just in an ivory tower. Uh, some companies call it a center of excellence for automation or even, even worse, you just outsource it because other people can do it better. Um, we really try to learn from, from each other. So and we base our automation on three pillars. First of all, make it simple. Because if it's simple, you can involve everybody who is affected. And uh, you get also people engaged. They are not scared because they don't understand and uh, they see it's also not rocket science. And at the same time, it's an opportunity to grow and prepare yourself for the future. So um, that was uh, very helpful to really create fans within the organization. And these fans then create additional followers which support the automation idea. So the simpler, the better. The second pillar is really solving real life problems from the very first moment. To not move with artificial examples, but um, to, from the very first moment, use automation to solve real life problems. Because that helps people to understand that it's uh, tangible and that it's not a threat for them. And finally, the third pillar is really starting small. Because uh, the smaller you start, the less painful will be the failures in the beginning. So and you can learn from them and uh, can continue. So I think uh, these three approaches uh, make it simple, so free life problems and start small were so far quite successful. At the same time, we try to 
understand bots as our future colleagues. So the bot will support us, the humans, but also needs maintenance and also needs a manager. So that's how we approach it because um, that also helps that uh, people are not scared of the bots because it's somewhere artificial far away. It's really within our office and um, that helped us so far to get the support for automation and for the bot technologies. Thanks, Mike. Very interesting approach to automation. Yolanda, what about you? How are you approaching automation? Um, in our case, we started with the very um, simple use cases. Um, now we have achieved almost 30% of the transactional activity is partially automated. Um, but the challenge now is to simplify um, the basis, the, the process, because uh, we don't want to automate the complexity. We want to have a simple process and then um, automate as much as possible um, to try to keep uh, the consistency and the governance at the end, but not to um, a full the process with many different requirements. Uh, so we try to keep very updated the, the requirements and the, the must have, the, what we really need in the process. Um, and then from that, uh, to automate and to digitalize. Um, so uh, with the change of the system, what we are doing basically is that is the perfect excuse to review and to renew the, the process. So basically, that's what we are doing. And, but definitely, uh, automation is something that needs to be um, embedded in the procurement organization and is uh, very, very helpful. And uh, we, we think that needs to be um, on procurement agenda, for sure. Thank you, Yolanda. I loved how you both put simplification as part of your automation vision. Uh, it's interesting, in Amazon we put simplification and innovation as part of the same principle, because we see the two things going hand in hand together, so it's very, very much aligned. One last question for both of you, starting with you, Mike, maybe. What is the next step in your digital transformation now? The next step for us is to stabilize and enhance our core, which is the order management process. Um, stabilization means that we have to drive for improved user satisfaction, increase process efficiency and quality to really make the change we have now deployed sustainable. At the same time, we need to enhance our order management core, so to say. Um, so we will roll it out to Asia, to the Americas, as well as we are going towards really end to end processes which are fully integrated. So that afterwards, we can then move forward with more advanced technologies like uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence on a broader scale, and also connect to strategic sourcing topics at the same time. But first, we have to focus on our core so that based on a very stable core, we can then enhance our services. And same question for you, Yolanda your uh, next steps in digital transformation? Um, yeah, in the near future, we are going to complete the IT um, a project. So uh, we go live uh, at the beginning of, of next year. Um, also, at the same time, we are renewing the uh, catalog system and we are incorporating new buying channels. So uh, we believe we need a combination of different catalogs, so internal catalogs, punch outs, and other channels uh, like the use of Amazon Business that is giving the, the even giving out the opportunity to um, route the long tail spend, and um, we think that having different channels for these stakeholders, they will use more intensively the catalogs and uh, will uh, uh, enable uh, focusing the procurement organization in really on the negotiations, especially on the um, more strategic negotiations. So uh, we see catalogs as a lever for, for the uh, strategy that we want to achieve. 
Thank you both. Very concrete next steps. Very interesting. Uh, I think we have a couple of minutes left, so let me pick up a couple of uh, questions that our audience has been asking us. And I think the first question is for you, Yolanda, specifically. How are you coping with supply chain disruptions since the pandemic outbreak? Um, we have, uh, in the procurement organization, we have a supply chain um, a team uh, that is managing that. Um, and uh, basically, it's a question of managing risk. Uh, and, um, and But uh, I think um, we, we have made a lot of work at front. So uh, managing risk, uh, uh, I think, is becoming more and more important. And this pandemic um, um, has uh, given us the, the proof, has proved that uh, that, that, uh, change, that uh, risk management strategy needs to be on, on the top priority um, in, the, in the supply chain organization. So, um, in our case, there is a global dedicated team managing that uh, and managing uh, uh, alternative sources and, and, ma and managing all the, all the impact. So, in, a, in our case, it was sorted out because there is a team dedicated and there is a strategy, a clear strategy on that. Um, but, of course, this is now something that uh, is, um, is sorted out overnight. This is something that is the result of a dedicated team for years, <laughs> globally and locally, coordinate, being coordinated together. So. Thanks, Yolanda. Uh, thanks for your answer. Uh, Mike, one last question for you, the last minute that we have together. Uh, could you elaborate on topics for which you have started activities around machine learning or AI? Yes, for sure. Uh, machine learning is uh, just a very concrete example of uh, all the end user requests we get is the classification of these end user requests in order to either route it to the right person to answer it or to process it automatically with the uh, correct answer from our huge library of uh, questions and answers. So uh, that is one topic where we are currently working on leveraging artificial intelligence and also to come up with uh, more functionalities, for example, for chatbots, so that we help our business to uh, follow our procedures, our procurement procedures, much more easily because it helps at the end the business, but also us to stay efficient and lean. Yolanda, Mike, thank you very much for joining us today. It's been excellent to hear directly from you about your digitalization and automation strategy. And now on to the next sessions of ABX 2020.